We still have a crate, we're just not using it yeah, as much because it apart. He, just was, he was just peeing and potting in the crate okay. and it was, we couldn't break that habit unless we kind of took it away. Not really. No. no. Really? Even when we leave. Where does he go potty at? Downstairs. Downstairs. Only outside? Yeah. yeah. Oh, outside. cool. If accidents are just as bad with the crate and without, you gotta keep up with the crate and just right. he has to get through it. But since it's a huge day and night difference yeah. like, of not having accidents, there's no reason why you need need the crate. Do you guys have a pen, a gate, some kind of boundary? We, yeah. Like this room over here is oh. like our boundary. So okay. when we leave, we'll leave him in. Wonderful. Maybe okay, so schedule-wise, the potty training is really good. Maybe we should add in like a bell or something. We, so that's a, yeah, to here. like signal us that he needs yeah. to go. I'll work out of the office like in here all day and mm -hmm. I'll, I've been like, I guess, um, like, prolonging like the time in between sessions yes. and he's, he's good for like a, at least four or five hours at this point. Okay, cool. And at night he's not going in his bed, he's, he's just... And four or five hours in this room? Yeah, with me or with like, you. or, or running out. around, yeah, oh, or like I'll open the door yeah. and he'll have, he'll have some water or run around the living room and stuff. Cool. And, okay, yeah. so he's doing well with that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I think if we're not like watching him, maybe he'll, he's more prone to like, like peeing on the floor or something. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was gonna tell you with, with you guys giving him a little bit more freedom at his age. I don't know if you have a testing phase really, but he's in the prime time for it. And Frenchies do this a lot with potty training. Mm -hmm. So they have all this freedom and then you're like, oh, everything's going really good. And then they start having accidents all the time. Yeah, that was like a, like a few weeks ago, I think. Oh, okay. You, he was you good with it. Really yeah, he was good. And then I was like, okay, like he could walk around on his own. And then it was just like every day for like two weeks. It was like really oh, bad. Okay, got and, it. And we got over that. Okay. Yeah. So if it happens again, go backwards on the freedom okay. consistently. So then does he ever have accidents in here? Never. So this is like his crate. Then. That's like his crate. Yeah, yeah. his big crate. So go back to like his day revolving around there. Okay. If you're not in there. Right. And limited freedom out. Okay. The mistake people make is, I'm just telling you guys this, because most dogs have one testing phase, whereas you have a French Bulldog and they could have like a million testing phases. Okay. So if it happens again, instead of putting him away for just an hour quick, uh -huh. it has to be the reverse. It has to be like, okay, this next week or few days, now you're on a strict schedule again and limited freedom to get back to no accidents, then re-earn freedom. We were starting to work on like him in the crate saying stay and then like going behind this wall where he would still be staying without having us in his like eyesight. Oh, okay. So we're still kind of like going through that. He's, he does really well. Just doing steak. Yeah. Okay. He also does when he's like, yeah, we should switch it to like you go to your bed. Yeah, command. go to your bed, command, and then. Do so you guys do go to your bed? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And he'll do it. Okay, and he goes. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. So we just did the same type of thing that we were doing, but now with the. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. And here? Yeah. Yes, good. And so is there any real issues? Walking is walking. Walking is definitely walking. an issue. Okay. It's the biggest it's the issue. Of course. <laughs> Um, what do you think it is? Is it pulling backwards? Is it getting excited about other things? Yeah, it's being distracted by like, yes. like a bird or a dog or... Just in his own world completely yeah. on yeah. the walk. Okay. Does he uh, play with other dogs? He All the does. time. He's so he gets, he Okay, cool. Dogs. So you socialize so well. Yeah. Sit. Yes. Good boy. Do you go down? That Sit. was the one that we... We're really trying to work on it. Yeah, it's he so needs hard that to one. Something just right off the bat that I noticed will be really good for him is like, you guys should get him into like play mode, kind of like he is right now. Mm -hmm. And then when he's in this state, do go to your bed to teach him to snap out of that state. Because okay. I see a lot of people only do the two separately. It's like play mode, and then they're like, oh, why can't he calm down? Right in reality, but you have to train him when he's in that escalated state, because usually you just train him in a focused state and he can go to the bed. Um, and that's something that Frenchies 
they follow the direction of the training so well, and then people's issues happen when they're actually in a reality excitement state, and they haven't been trained to turn it off from that state. Yeah. So that's something really good, because I think he actually is a really chill Frenchie and puppy, for sure. So getting him in that escalated state, and then getting him to come down from it, yeah, really good really, practice. It's hard. That's it's hard, hard to do. Him. We can practice it a little bit, too. He, when he gets crazy, like, he'll, he won't let us catch him. Like, he'll run all over that place. <laughs> Oh, yeah. he does? Yeah, okay. he definitely does that. The other thing, too, that I was, like, looking, like, at your blog is, like, when they're playing in, with other dogs before they get, like, too excited, like, say their name to yeah. get their attention, Call him out he of will it. not do it. Okay. Like, he's, like, in the God. play mode. I've tried so many times, and, okay. like, his attention, when it, it wants something, it doesn't play. So try this all the time. Although okay. you can't get it, it seems like it will never click. But it might just take a, literally doing this every single day until it clicks. But this will be such a good one for him to just be able to say down on command and he lays down. So just keep working on it. Try it on the bed, you know, just to like pull straight down. The biggest mistake people make with the down is pulling out this way where you should pull straight down to the paws. Mm -hmm. held it. But usually if I go straight down the paws, he pops his butt up. Yeah. So you have to kind of do it like right like this. And then I don't know if you're going to push the back legs out. Oh. Yes! yes! Good boy! Or like he did a side one. Yeah. Like, some dogs do weird things. Sit. Yes. Down. Yes! Good boy! You just have to do it in this awkward little zigzagging way for him. Oh my gosh, of course. Frenchies in Boston is like put up the most fight with the down. It's like this whole unique way for all of them individually. So yeah, just kind of bring it down. The, you want to get him into this weird position where he's one like this and one like this. He has a dog in his sides. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> But practice that a lot, the down, okay. to try to get him to know that command. I'll go over, like, leave it with you guys. I know I'm, like, being so specific towards Frenchies, but I work with so many Frenchies, and they're, like, a different breed. Like, <laughs> or they're a different species, I mean. <laughs> they're so specific. It's, like, the one breed that, like, most dogs grow out of picking shit up, and but Frenchies, like, don't. They're, like, always pick, like... The four-year-old Frenchies that I work with are like eating stuff off the street. I'm like, yeah, why aren't you grown out of that? that? He is a garbage. It's so it's weird. <laughs> okay, so the first one. Well, actually, I'd like to get the dog in a down first. <gasps> yes, good boy. Okay, so now I'm going to tell him leave it. Yes. So you have done it, huh? Because you kind of yeah. Do he he has yes. he throws these things out of his back. <laughs> Yeah, like he somewhat knows it. But again, like you would have to practice that one so it's instant because that yeah. thing on the ground, he still licked at it for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, you want it to be instant so he's not even going for that at all. Basically, what leave it should mean is trade. So for the next two months, think of it as like a trade command. So okay. sometimes um, my clients would say trade just so that they can think of that in their head instead of being like, leave it. Because mm -hmm. it's the number one reason why you won't have a consistent leave it. It's because okay. they know you're just... You know, you're putting all the negative energy into what they need to leave, and mm -hmm. they think like, oh, I better eat this faster. Yeah. So it should be a trace. Leave it. <gasps> yes. So practicing that so that that command is instant. Now, is there anything that he's always getting into that you're like having to hide? Like socks or underwear or anything like, like that? Like corners of... Yeah, he goes through this corner of okay. the rock and this... Um, store right here. Anything else? Not so much. But what I always say with things like that is to practice with them. Um, because something like this, I mean, if you're telling him, so the corner right here, I think that won't go for it right now. But if you're telling him leave it, instead of like running to him and like pushing him away, say leave it and go and get a treat and just be patient and have him come to you instead. So what do you usually do with the harness? Um, to get him to... Yeah. So like the moment we open the door and he hears it open, he'll like run to the door and I'll put it like right outside of the door. Okay. So, and he'll like think for a second, like, what should I do? Should I put the harness on and like get to go outside? Or yeah. Am I staying in? 
and ev eventually like he'll he'll come in and like put the harness on. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you guys should get like another little bed or something for out here because yeah. I think when you're hanging out out here, yeah, just, just like a, a go to your spot command out here. Go to your bed. You can use the same command. Right. Totally fine. Would be good for him because while it's not a huge deal now and it probably will never be like. Dogs who do that whole harness thing, people are like, it's not the worst thing, but it's annoying because then it becomes more of a game. Right. And it's like, we know you want to go out, but they just get in their own head. So yeah. if you give them a different job to do first, go to your bed, they follow that and it's really easy instead of their mind being on the harness. Because okay. it's not like he doesn't like the walk. It's just like, should I do it? Should I not? And it's yeah. like in his own head and the only way to get him out of it is to command him to do something else. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so I would do that just before it escalates, because when you see that, it will escalate into more of a game. And then it will just be good when he is super excited, or if he's too excited when people are here, just to direct him to go to your bed will just be a really good, like, chill place for him. Obviously, I'm not going to see him in his super crazy state, but, like, let's say he was just so crazy, being mouthy, going nuts, and you direct him to that spot. I think it's a good after crate spot when you're trying to transition out of the crate. Like we use the crate a lot to force them to have self-control. Mm -hmm. And so now like if you're being too crazy, I'll guide you on what to do. But if you come right back at me and I'm mouthing and all of that, then if the bed didn't work, then you go in your own little area. I don't, do you think he gets like that sometimes where he definitely needs like a break yeah, away? Definitely, yeah, definitely for sure. Okay. Yeah, I think that's really, really good. It's like, okay. I'll help you, but you have to do some of this on your own. Chill out. And then at this point with his age, if he comes right back, it's just because he can. So just mm -hmm. let him know that if you're going to do that, I've tried to show you how you can hang out with us. But if you're not going to follow my direction, then you can go and take a little break in there. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, use that for sure. Just because oh. what when people think that's mean, I think it's meaner to just let him like have a free-for-all and not know how to control himself. Teach him how to control himself now so for the rest of the life he'll never have to use that area again. Yeah. Okay so with this and this is something out in the street too. What I see a lot of people doing is leave it and then keep walking. Um, so one always reward but two like I was just with a friend owner that looks like him actually and she almost like freaked out when I saw he was going through something and I let him go right here and I said leave it. She's like he's gonna get it, he's gonna get it. But what I do is I just hover him over it. I'm gonna do the carpet so he's not, <clears throat> not all over. Hover him over it so he's not able to get it. But I'm not whipping him back because he's doing nothing on his own when you do that. Okay. No, of course. Okay, leave it. So here's where usually you'd be pulling him, but I'm gonna make him do it on his own. Yes, good boy, good. And so the couple of ways you can do to leave it here. Once you say leave it and yes, if that same thing is right there, you can use it to just keep doing repetitions. Okay. Leave it. Leave it. Yes, good. But you see how he's actually snapping out of it on his own. Yeah. Whereas typically you're walking down something in the street, leave it. And that's kind of how it looks. That's how yeah. see everybody walk down the street. So instead. That's exactly how we walk down the yeah, street. Yeah, yeah. So just pause literally one second over that thing. Leave it. He's like, wow, I, I can't do that all on my own. Yeah. Yes. Let's go. Good. <laughs> yes. And so at least try to hover over it once if you can. You're not always going to have time. But even better, let him go back to it a couple more times. Because the more mm -hmm. amount of time you let him go back to it, the more he really gets over it. To really have a consistent leave it, like you would have to go back and forth until he's over that thing. Because just telling him leave it once barely actually scratches the surface. The more you do it, it seems like he never will get over it, but he will. Leave it. Yes, good. And remember, treat each time. Yes.
Steven? Yes! Good boy! He's like so confused. He's like, but we left it. What's waiting there? Yes! leave it he never gets that thing okay. so I know a lot of times people will be like leave it and then like okay go get it but that's a weight and you guys did the weights right yeah. with food and stuff yeah yeah we probably need to enforce it a little bit more but I mean he definitely understands the command and okay another command I want to introduce is look so I know we say his name a lot and mm -hmm. sometimes dogs get a little bit immune to it um, but look should mean break your focus on what you want, look to me, and then that's how you get it. Okay. So this is what you should start doing too. Anytime he sees people or dogs or these things that he wants, he needs to start knowing his key to getting them is checking in with you, then he can go instead of being in his own world and getting it. Okay. Look. Yes. Have you done that? No. <laughs> Pierre. So I will just say one second. Sit. Pierre. You know, just sit on this. Is that it? Is he usually weird about what he sits on? Not really. He is too. Yeah, yeah, he, he is. is. But he wasn't earlier. Okay, go say hi. No, you can. Pierre. Him. Pierre. Pierre. He's like, what do you want from me? Obviously, that works better when he's actually excited to get there. But, you know, so like when he's that way, just break his focus. Have you guys done that? Getting him to like no. check in? No, no, but that's an important one because when he's doing the dog interaction and like, you can tell that it's going to start to like, they're about to like prounce on each other. Mm -hmm. I need to like get his attention so he like calms totally. down because he'll start doing the jumping thing. Should have brought Nobu today. I have my dog with me. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, he's at the hotel. There's this little exercise you can practice. So if people are coming here, what you should do is leash him. His excitement, like when he saw me, is not like I said, like the average Frenchie that's just jumping and can't like stop. It's like mental excitement from him. His mind is just glued to me. So if you were, were where you don't see it was an issue when he said hi to me because it was very polite. It's the mind thing when his mind wants to be somewhere else. So if you leashed him and I came in, he would just be wanting to get to me, right? Yeah. So it'd be the hardest thing for him to give you his focus before getting to me. So that's what you guys should do. And you can even do it like when you're coming home because he get really excited to see you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Every day you could just leash him. That's a good idea. And vice versa, you know, when, when each of you get home, leash him. So he'd be focused over here and you're like, here, sit. Okay, now go and say hi. Because okay. the more you can have him with you mentally, that's the goal with training always, is that the dog is present with you. The most well-behaved dog, it's like a service dog that's always looking up to their handler, like what's right. next, what's next. Whereas dogs have issues when they're getting into their own world and they're like, I have to get somewhere. So Which he does. Like mm -hmm. when I have to get to work in the morning and I'm taking him down, mm -hmm. like if there's another dog, I need this to be like a 10, five minute thing. Yeah. And like he's like, he's just everywhere. Yeah. Okay. You just have to be really strict about rewiring his brain that way and not feeling bad then if you go out there and he gets to say hi to no dogs. Because the only way he should be saying hi to dogs then is if he checks in with you first. Okay. And I'll show you what like 50% focus is versus full is because you're gonna, when you have a dog that zones in that much, you have to do both. And most people during training only do it at 50%. And what I mean by that is like, okay, if he's excited to get to this dog up there, they at least will do it, or the dog park, whatever it is. Here, sit. Yes. Like one sit here, go forward, sit. Yes. Okay, go get it. And then they allow him to go in. That was pretty good. But what usually happens is like the dog sits for a split second, but they're just like ready to bolt here mentally. You know, like you yeah. might have him like 10%, but then he's got 90% focus still here. 
So we're going to do a little exercise that shows um, full self-control, and that was half self-control, like just getting him to sit once. And that's what, so that should be the bare minimum, at least breaking his focus, getting him to sit just one time before going to something that he wants. But the more you can get him, the better. Throw this tree. So I'm going to shout, call him. And the goal is to not use treats up here eventually, but I will use it this first time. Right here, this way. Be very strict about facing either this way or behind. They'll try to do that sit and like have their cake and eat it too, but he has to be present with you. Okay. So giving him the treat. Yes. So you want to get to too much focus first. So shoulders to shoulders. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yes, and actually I think he's going to do really good at this because I think his biggest thing is probably just that initial breaking the focus, whereas most dogs, the hardest thing is the second part of this that he's actually doing on his own right now. So first, directing him here to where you want it to be to get to too much focus. And so maybe this is just the hardest part in reality for him, just getting to that too much focus. But then I always say the real test of self-control is after the treat, after you let his mind go. Good boy. Good boy. Yes. We want him to move forward. We want him to look at the treat and think, how do I get it? <gasps> yes! <laughs> Just like that. Good boy. Sit. Yes. Okay, go get it. And that was really good for a six-month-old puppy. So again, like, He's the opposite of most puppies. That's really good introducing like the 50% and full self-control because that's the goal with training. Like those represent the two levels of training. Like one is, will the dog do it with your direction? Mm -hmm. But the goal of training is that it just becomes the new and natural instinct. Like you don't want to have to be on top of your dog for life. You know, you don't want to have to see a dog and be like, here, up here, forever. You want it to just be the new natural instinct he sees the dog and checks in. So in order to achieve that, you have to introduce that second level of training during training, which most people don't. They just are like always on top of the dog. Yeah. And then in reality, they expect him to know it. But you have to be able to introduce it in controlled situations just like that and let him figure out some things on his own. So have you guys gone over any leash walking exercises? No, we didn't get there. No, okay, we can start doing, I wanna give you one to practice, just like in the hallway. There's a couple things that you can practice. So one is called just the follow the leader. So well, first I'll tell you when he gets into that state, what you should do is tell him, wait. Okay. Yes, to get him out of it. Do you do that? No. I don't think so, no. Okay. Don't continue to pull him out of it or you're going to have the issues forever and he's going to be triple as strong when he's full grown, you know? And then, yeah, like, sometimes are exactly. little, but it's so strong mm -hmm. when they're, like, pulling backwards. It really is. So... If I get a mistake, wait. Do a sit and a wait. Okay. Yes. To just kind of shift him out of it. Okay. If they're not, like I just see people are like, come on. Yeah, that's me. Come on. 100%. Yeah, and if his mind is still on that, he's going to just still think that's such a negative thing. You basically have to take his mind off of what's happening and he gets over it. Okay. Wait. Okay. Yes, good boy. That's what you should do during that. Now we're going to do this one leash exercise called follow the leader. Basically what we want is for him to match you. The healing position is, is at your side, loose leash, and looking up at you like this. So make sure you have him doing all three of those things first. If he's sitting, that's totally fine. Um, and then I'm going to take one step. and we want him to match you. So when I do this with Frenchies, I do it opposite of with most dogs because typically most dogs, the second you start walking, is he ever pulling forward? Sometimes, Sometimes. yeah. Sometimes. Oh, he does both. Like when he knows he's about to be like at the building for oh, walking okay. back, like he, he yeah, like yeah. starts going fast and like is pulling Okay, this. but for the most part, more issues happen back, yeah. Yeah. right? Okay, so if I have to, Usually when you start walking, 
a, a dog immediately then has their head down and they're pulling in their own world. Whereas Frenchies, they go in their own world and go backwards. So I want him to match me. Yes, without me having to lure him. So I'm going to give him a treat only if he matches me without the hesitancy. If I have to guide him to me, just praise when he gets there. Okay. Yes! Ready? Let's go! Sit! Yes! Good boy! See that little bit of like he thought Positive. about it with yeah. that? So we'll see. I'm going to do a few more of these, but if he isn't catching on to it, then I'm going to treat him just for coming to my side. Then we can be more strict about the treats, I guess. Yes. Okay, we're gonna try one more time and take a smaller step. But see, this is so what he does, right? He just like stares Absolutely. at you. Yeah. Let's go. We're right there, the average dog, instead of going back and thinking about it. Yes. Um, just follows you. So we'll give him a treat each time right now. Here, sit. Yes. Let's go. Yes. So then I would say we can start being strict giving treats only if he comes like that fast. So treat versus no treat for this exercise just depends on the dog, their weakness, and what level you know you can expect them to do it. But the point of the treat versus no treat is to motivate him to follow you faster. So he's probably just never really had to have like strict focus when you're out, right? Yeah, it just hasn't been something that we have really worked on or mm -hmm. we know how to do. So now after yeah. I've seen that it's totally it's good. And do you bring treats outside? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, we need, I need to be more Do consistent. it really consistently yeah. right now. Because right now at his age two, it's where like the rest of the world is more motivating than you. And to in, just to make sure you have that routine of getting him to check in before everything, um, you have to have a treat. On yeah. Because he sees you guys all the time, you're not going to be more motivating. So yeah. to make the routine of it, it's easy to wean off of the treats once he knows the routine of it.